occupation or for the occupation of any member of their family. The state government has amended the Goa Building Lease, Rent and Eviction Control Act 1968. The amended act which has come into force from 25th June 2009 enables the Goan expatriate to recover possession of their rented premises through a summary procedure when the premises are bona fide required by them or their, for their own occupation or for the occupation of any member of their family. We have formulated Goan scholarship program for diaspora children for benefit of children of NRIs and EIOs of Goan origin so as to assist them in pursuing higher and technical education in Goa. The scheme has been up uploaded on all websites. However, unfortunately, there was no taker this year. I will uh, appeal to the Goan expatriate to take the benefit of the scheme for their children. Goa is one of the few states to introduce the Goa card for the benefit of Goan expatriate who come to Goa on, on uh, short vacation so they can have better access to government department and the paid personal attention by the, by the officers. The holders of the Goa card are also offered discount ranging from 10 to 40 percent in more than 25 establishments in Goa, including hotel, travel agent, hospital, etc. It is also proposed to create emergency repatriation, repatriation fund for the benefit of non-resident Goan in times of distress abroad. The proposal envisages extending assistance for transporters and of murder remains of the disease NRI, NRG to Goa in extremely deserving cases, where the next of the kin is unable to bear the cost of transportation providing assistance for repatriation those in RG who are faced with extremely serious medical conditions including due to accident where the next of kin is unable to meet the cost and repatriation of NRG in distress due to loss of job etc. by bearing the cost of airfare to Goa, the proposal under active concern of the government. The global recession no doubt has made a cascading effect on the human capital as well as uh, but I am told that many, uh, not many Goans gainfully implied abroad have been affected by the recession. However, those who have returned to and look for assistance to invest their hard-earned money into fruitful self-empowerment activities can always count on the state government for their rehabilitation. In fact, a nodal officer has been appointed in the Department of uh, Industries, Trade and Commerce, especially to deal with the NRG of Goan origin were keen to invest in eco-friendly projects in Goa having potential in generating employment opportunities to at local youth. The Economic Development Corporation of Goa, which has been the main catalyst for the economic and industrial growth of Goa, has also formulated a special scheme for energy under which loan assistance is provided for acquiring fixed assets like, asset like land, building and plant and machinery for either new micro, small, medium or large enterprises or for expansion or modernization of uh, existing industrial uh, resources. In this context, one of the major initiatives taken by the government is to establish an institute of hotel management and catering technology in the state, state sector with intact capacity of 120 for three year degree course. The institute will come upon government land and will be funded by Union Minister of Tourism as part of infrastructure in the arena of resource uh, development. Before concluding, I would like to assure Goans in Kuwait and other Gulf countries that they can always count on the state government for support and assistance. I wish the convention success. This is the written space I was asked to read, but much more than that, uh, I would like to talk about the uh, what Goa is today because a lot of expatriate people are here. Their children are not visiting Goa. So we like to talk about that, ki, what are the educational schemes are in Goa, what are the developmental schemes there, what are the infrastructure has been developed. We will talk about that, then I will be more free to speak. This was the scheme I was bound by to speak, I have read. But let me again wish you all success, happy Eid, Eid Mubarak ho, aur aap noon ka stay yaha achcha ho, and have all pleasure, dhe baro ho. Thank you very much, Mr. Srivatsava. You will have ample time tomorrow to discuss and interact with the Goan community. Now I call upon Mr. Luis Falero, the former Chief Minister of Goa, to address this Global Goan Convention.
Your Excellency, Ambassador of India, Kuwait, Sri Ajay Malhotra, the Chief Secretary of the Goa State, Sri Srivastava, the Chairman and a dear friend of mine, Sri Dharma Santosh, Mr. Kamath, Director of NRI Commission in Goa, our distinguished guest who are present over here, who have come all the way from Goa, the President of the Centre, our committee members. I think going chair, Pratik Sosran, the leader of the Sarahat, Mogan, Guimadan Bandi. पुलिस वाते माय मोगा जो नमस्कार ईद मुबारक जन्ना जन्ना माका संधि में होता या तुम चाह सोवित कुवैत का मध्यों पाक कुपुष आज निशान दो प्रात पुष कि जब यह ग्लोबल को इन कन्वेंशन अका आक्या संस्करण के आके जगान के जब कोई चल लीडर हाथ कुछ से जाना गांव लक्षिल या नरकोता टाइज अंगाजी रहात अंते पास उनको कुछ सदा कि जब ना कोई चल आके जगान के लीडर है क्या ते अंगा सो एक टाइम लगता है उनसे प्रश्न तुम जो प्रश्न आज जब तुझे कर पाक अनेक कई प्रश्न दहात इस उड़ावे कर पाक एक संधि में होता है आवाज़ जितना के कि एक एक आदमी पर भी दिया हम हम जो बाब एडवर्ड फलेरो एनआरआई कमिशन अत्यंत बड़ा बोल हम जो बोमानेस्ट एम्बेसडर श्री आजी मलोत्रा तक कहानी एक कन्वेंशन ग्लोबल कन्वेंशन अंगसूर गुरु अर्पाक खूब सौ आधार इन सौ का दिल लोगा अनेक तंचे आधार हैं आईज इन ग्लोबल मीट अंगसूर जाता जो शे दूसरे यूरोपियन संगला अमितोरी आके जगंत पढ़ो जरे ये वाला ग्लोबल इकोनॉमिक मेल्टडाउन मराम का एक मेहता आर्थिक मोड़ा, इकोनॉमिक, कुछ शे वर्ल्ड वर्ल्ड देश जा, जाओ अमेरिका, जाओ यूरोप, इकोनॉमिकली कुछ शे वाइड परिस्थिति रहा। पर अमी हम जो शांति बुलाए ना जो मुझे था कि जोरी तोरे आगे संसरण इकोनॉमिक मेल्टडाउन हा, हम जो देशन तो ये इकोनॉमिक मेल्डाउन ना, we are having the highest GDP in the world today. ये हम मुद्दों संगता, कि यहाँ का कुप्शे कोई कारण है सोच जहाँ, तो प्रत्यर प्रत्येक देशांतलन आई ले हाँ, कई लोग पुरे अमेरिका सुनाई लास्ट तले, कई लोग पुरे यूरोपा सुनाई लिया इस तरह न नंगा जन अर्थिक परिस्थिति वाइड हा कितना एम्प्लॉयमेंट वो अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वो बेकारी वाट का अनकुप क्षेत्र आस्था का होता है अंधेरून आमी जे गोवन डायस पौरा जे प्रत्येक जगह दहात मिडुन काय उपाय को बचकर हो जहाँ अरे कुप्स ये कोई कारण में पड़े लाम जाओ अमेरिका जाओ यूरोप आ बोरे बोरे जागे नहीं हाथ बोरी बोरी महीनी देंगा हाँ ताजी नॉलेज जिया हाँ एक्सपीरियंस जिया हाँ ती तानी पत्तुन बोया ही उन कोई चीज़ बुमेर ताजो फायदो ताजे ताजे नॉलेज जो एक्सपीरियंस जो फायदो कोई चीज़ बुमेर अर्पा करो जहाँ अ मगर इस तरह जब ना उम्री नूरतां कुप्शा ना सोर 
जे आहात ते पळयतात की त्या कडेन तेंकडे सोमना तेंक लागून हांव थोडीशी उतरां इंग्लिशीन उलोवपाक सोदता विथ द एडवेंट ऑफ ग्लोबलायजेशन लिबरलायजेशन इवन इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नॉलॉजी on the one hand the world has become a global village it has brought the world together but on the other hand it has also got its uh, ill effects in our country after 1991 india has launched the new winds of change in the indian economy so called liberalization and globalization it is very important to note that the private enterprise private initiative and the private citizen has come into center stage government is only a facilitator and this era of globalization which started in 1991 when dr manmohan singh was the finance minister has unleashed the new winds of change of development and progress therefore today india is marching ahead in spite of the economic meltdown all over the world we are marching ahead with the highest gdp in the world first it was china but now today india is having the highest gdp i am mentioning this specially because goa is part of india goa after the liberation with the development and progress we have done today we have attracted nearly 50% people from the neighboring states that means this people who have come from the other states have not come to idle themselves in goa they are there in goa because it has unleashed economic potential on the one hand at the time of liberation we had 7 lakhs population leading to the goa's economy goa's economy earlier used to be mining today mining is devastating goa thereafter was it was the money order economy because many of our goans were working in africa gulf europe and the money was coming today goa is a brand is a tourist destination not no not only in this country but it is a international tourist destination known all over the world not only because of uh, beautiful beaches because we have got a distinct identity distinct culture it is a it is a gateway to europe because we have got east and west which meets together as our chief secretary has said i am not going to repeat our economic indicators are one of the best in the world which can be compared to any of the european country we have got the lowest birth rates lowest death rates we have got a high highest per capita income we have got highest mileage of roads but today goans are not happy in goa why goa is progressing goa is developing there are so many ngos in goa who are fighting to stop every developmental activity which goes against the interest of goa if goa develops goa progress and if goans are not part and parcel of this development what is the use of progress people in goa are fighting but i can say the people of goa origin who have gone anywhere in the world have done the best in fact they have excelled goans have done all over the world the best except in goa that is the reason you see any arena in goa 
Even the editors of the newspapers are non-goers. Many of the officers are non-goers. The business has gone out of the hands of the goers. Most of the five-star hotels, except one or two, are held by non-goers. And today, the people of Goa are feeling this pinch. The cost of land, the prices of land has been skyscraping. It is not possible for a common man to construct a house, not even to buy an apartment. And there is a threat of the very identity of Goa and Goans. I am particularly saying this to you because I feel with a rich knowledge, with a rich experience, with a rich background, you work all over the world <clears throat> and you as leaders of Goan community all over the world can play a distinctive role in the state of Goa. We are not saying that all the money you earn, you come back and plow back in Goa. You know, I, you, I remember the Chinese proverb. They say that the tree, when it grows, it blooms, it gives beautiful flowers, beautiful fruits. Finally, when the tree gets old, it sheds its leaves to the roots and enriches the very same soil from which the tree has taken the nutrition. And that has to be done. If Goa has to prosper, if Goa has to march ahead, it is you who has to play a role. Today, the Chief Secretary will inform you, we don't need the finances. We need the expertise, the technology, the experience, what you have. Billas and Tatas did not have the wealth. Some of them are having today. But when they started, they didn't have any wealth. And perhaps if they had the wealth, they would have never been the businessman. They would have put the money as you are putting in the fixed deposits and lived on the interest. But they have built the empires, like alliance. It's our national, but much, much bigger than the multinational. You go and see in uh, UK, among the 20 richest people in the world, at least 5 to 10 will be Indians. There are so many schemes. And therefore I said initially, once the country has embarked on the process of liberalization and globalization, where private enterprise, private initiative and private citizens forms the center stage, government is only a facilitator. Come back to Goa. I know Goans don't want to take much risk, but that is entrepreneurship. Billas and Tatas were not engineers. They were not architects. But they have hired and fired maybe thousands and lakhs of engineers and architects, perhaps financial consultants, so many chartered accountants. It is the entrepreneurship, it is the enterprise which is very important. I also would like to, I think I'm taking a lot of time, I also would like to tell you, please, please maintain your identity wherever you are and language helps to maintain our identity. I remember when I was a new MLA in 1979, I brought various resolutions in my party. They were passed but they only remain resolutions. Then I brought various resolutions in the assembly. One of the resolutions I remember, it was in 1981 or 82. It's a very historic resolution. I said 99% of the Goans speak Kokani. 
It's got a rich culture, rich heritage. We must have Kokni as an official language. And we must have Kokni Abhyas Kendra Kokni Academy. It was passed unanimously. In 1982-83, somewhere in uh, July, I brought another resolution, statehood, because our constitution talks of linguistic states, states formed on language, so official language and statehood were the twin aspirations of Goa and Goans. After they were passed, the only were resolution, then I brought the official language bill. And the hell was let loose. Goans have ever witnessed, has never witnessed such an agitation or may ever witness such an agitation. Today, fortunately, we have got Kokni as an official language. It is included in the schedule of the constitution. We have got statehood. But that is only the starting of the story. The story doesn't end there. <laughs> I have got to share with you my experience for the last three years as a member of Congress Working Committee in Delhi. I am also given an additional charge as in charge of Northeastern states, beautiful states like Goa, beautiful people like Goa, very rich cultural heritage very rich traditions. They have not forgotten their culture. They have not forgotten their identity. And therefore, they are deeply entrenched in their state. When we got liberation, at that time I was very young, thereafter was I was in power, of course. Therefore, I could bring these bills and resolutions. I also brought employment policy, employment for all. But we have actually lost our root. Many of the Goans at that time were saying that Marathi is the language of Goa, therefore Goa is a part of Maharashtra and therefore Goa should be merged with Maharashtra. And we had to fight opinion poll, we had to fight for statehood. But in this northeastern states, they said nothing to it. We want our culture to be preserved. We want our identity to be preserved. We want our language to be preserved. We want our state to be categorized as a special category state. Today, nobody can buy the land except designated areas. On every grants which the government of India gives to them, 95% is grants, only 5% is loan. Whereas in Goa, 5% is grant and 95 to 90% is loan. See, we were not focused. We didn't have a vision. We didn't have a perspective. We were not involved with the development of Goa. We were not involved with the progress. And when you are not involved, you are not committed. And when you are not involved and not committed, you cannot get results. Even now it's not late. And for that, all Goans have to come together, put our demands. Today, even though I am not in charge of Goa, I am in the Congress Working Committee. That is the highest body of the Congress party at Delhi. My support to you will be always there. In fact, if at all I am here, I never thought I will be here today. Two days back, I was with our Honorable Congress President in the Northeast. Then afterwards, when I came to Delhi, I was with the Chief Secretary at Delhi. Yesterday till uh, midnight, I was in Go Goa. Today I am here. And I must thank my very, very close friend, your chairman, Mr. Karbu Santos, who said you must come. And when he says, gives me order, I cannot disobey his orders. Because he is very near and dear to me. You are doing a good work. Your president is smiling, he is also doing good work. I have seen them in different forums, whether it is in Kuwait, 
whether it is in Qatar with my friend Simon or whether in so many places. I'm very happy that you have organized this two days convention. I'm sure it's going to give a lot of opportunities for our people to discuss, debate, have a brainstorming session. We have got with us our uh, Honorable His Excellency, the uh, Ambassador of India in Kuwait. You are our fatherly figure, you are our protector. And I'm so happy you are doing a very good uh, job to help and assist the Indian community in general and Goan community in particular. Even though our Chief Minister and Mr. Eduard Falero is not here, but we have got our Chief Secretary. Don't worry, don't feel frightened or shy to ask your questions. Because it's only when you ask questions, when you knock, knock hard, that the cries are heard and the decisions are taken. We have got a government in Goa, which I'm sure will be quite uh, attentive to the problems of our uh, uh, Goans all over the world. I wish this convention for the next two days all the success. Thank you very much for inviting me. I wish you good luck. Jay Hind. Jay Hind. Thank you very much, Mr. Polero, for highlighting some of the great opportunities available to the Goan community. Now I call upon Mr. Suresh Naik, the President of Goan Cultural Center, to attend this gathering. On this occasion, I take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to Your Excellency Mr. Ajay Mollatra, Ambassador of India to State of Kuwait, Honorable Mr. Luisin Palero, former Chief Minister of State of Goa, Mr. S. K. Srivastava, Chief Secretary of Government of Goa, Mr. Gullas Kamat, Director of NRI Affairs in Goa, distinguished dignitaries of Goa government, convention delegates, guest speakers, honored visitors, organizing committee, and the well wishers. Further, I am predominantly grateful to Goa government in general and to honorable Edward Faleir, in particular for conferring on the Goan Cultural Center the most distinctive honor to host the global convention in Kuwait. I am also indebted to His Excellency Mr. Ajay Mohapatra and other Indian Embassy officials for their support, assistance and cooperation for their best efforts to present this event. Thank you very much. Jai Goa, Jai Hind, Jai Kuwait. We should eat more. Now we have a very popular personality all the way from Melbourne, Australia, Mr. Oscar Lobo. Please that is the gathering of the Global Goan Convention. Thank you, Mr. Sunny Nazareth. Mr. Carmo Santos, Chairman. Mr. Suresh Naik, President, Mr. Ajay Malhotra, Ambassador of India, S.K. Srivasta, Chief Secretary of Goa Government, Luisinho Falerio, ex-Chief Minister, Minister 
Government of Goa, UD Kamath, Director of NRI Affairs, members of the Executive Committee, ushers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Al Salam Alaikum, Oha Rahmatullah, O Barakato. Dio Boro Dish Dio, Namaskar. There is a saying in Kuwait that whoever has eaten Humur will return back to Kuwait. I must confess I ate the fish when I once lived for 18 years. I am back after 22 years, both living in New Zealand and Australia. In Hindi, they would term me as Aya Savan Gumke. It is my great pleasure and honor to be in Kuwait for Global Goan Convention 2010. I made this long journey with my son Joshua 6,447 miles from one continent to another. I seized this opportunity to pay my respect to the elders of this nation on whose land this hotel is built and our Goan conference held today. My salute to the late Sheikh Sabah who was the Crown priest, Prince of this country and a dear beloved good human being good to the Indians. I am also here to make a difference to this convention and with that thought in mind to remind ourselves on what we can achieve is what we can conceive. Conceiving is achieving. It's like giving birth to a child. I am hopeful that by the end of this conference we will take a new leaf, a joint strategy and put the wheels of change in motion. There is a Chinese saying which carries the meaning that a speech will either prosper or ruin a nation. I hope my speech for the next eight minutes will mark the beginning of a new chapter on Goan unity, for which I have presented myself here today. Tumcha Sume Mezar. A lot has been preached to the Goans on unity, be it by Sermao from the pulpit, from Goan forums, meetings, Tavern, etc. Unity can only be achieved if we want to follow the 11th commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Do we Goans really love one another? Nothing in this world can survive without love. Even Beatles said, money can't buy me love. Human offsprings come around with love. So does flowers that we plant and water. Without love, there cannot be unity. Or for that matter, our faith in Trinity. Our motherland, Goa, is under attack. Our hills will no more be alive with the sound of music. So Julia Andrews will not come there. Our zoris, rivers, our beaches are used to release human reserves. Whereas Bollywood continues to project Goans as drunkards and flirts. As Goans, we have been challenged since 19 December 1961 when Goa became part of India. Even the late Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru did not know what being a Goan was all about and said words to the effect, Are Goa ka log ajib hai. I was a young lad of 14 years when on that day I was told to go to the fields as India has come to save us from the foreign power, Portugal. I heard the noise of bridges being blown up, helicopters circling around the fields and Laura announcing from a helicopter, Bevona kai vankaranu, tumka kai zauchena. Are these golden words that are embodied and have been embodied anywhere in Goan history? Was this supposed to be a promise of some sort? We Goans had no say about our land, about our future. It was, let it be done. I am still unable to reconcile why Mahatma Gandhi's principles were not followed by Nehru being Gandhi's successor. Was it a popularity contest? Could the so-called liberation of Goa have anything to do with the Goan attitude? Was the Portugal, Portuguese responsible for making us jealous by keep, keeping two-tier standards in Goa? 
and that's where jealousy took place. The Portuguese were responsible for us being jealous. It is not a Caribbean mentality. Some of our governments left Goa to greener pastures like Mumbai, Pakistan and other parts of the world. Goans, yes, are termed up as crab mentality. Is that the mentality? No, it was the jealousy that was created by the Portuguese. Goans should have been given a chance of self-rule like Falkland Island and separate country East Timor which was once ruled by Portugal and independence gained on the 20th May 2002. Are we Goans orphans in our own land? Why do many of our Goan Catholics or Hindus live in Goa? Recently, Mr. Banudas Savant, a pharmacist, left Goa and settled in Melbourne to encounter an unpleasant episode. And I was there as a Goan, left my family to help them because they were just permanent residents. Mr. Savant informed the Indian Embassy of the misfortune and luckily I was copied. The Indian Embassy said, keep quiet. We are having a good relation with Australia. At what cost? To recognize our Dudachi bus, Konkani, Gohans had to shed blood to get it recognized in the constitution of India. How much more Gohan blood has to spill to keep what is left of Goa? Will a kind soul in New Delhi look into our anomaly, please? Gohans need to close the gap of misunderstanding work over time to get our unity together. There can be no community without humanity and humanity is not complete without unity. Goans ut nidonaka anyeko netolo and amka bar gaukele. Goans cannot afford to be taken for right. Susagad attitude has robbed us of our peace in Goa. Yes, I am ready to come to Goa. If the ministers can promise that Goans will not go out of Goa, I take the challenge, I hang my boots, I will come today with you. But assure me that the Goans will not leave. Goans are not allowed to enter bars in Goa, similar to what British rule did in India. Indians and dogs not allowed. I applaud those Goans in Goa, in the Middle East, and a handful of overseas Goans who are genuinely spending time and money to restore what is left of Goa. Many Goans are aware that they are losing their identity, whatever we may say. Yes, there is an influx of Indians and we are all Indians and we need to work together. Many Goans throughout the world cannot be present in Goa, so they are very active in internet. Goans keep their spirits up by pouring spirit down. And we are tired showing negativity in Bollywood. We have to make a stand. If I see Amitabh Bachchan, I will have to tie his legs. It is one thing for me in Australia to say, Goa, Mary high and dance. And the other thing to go on great holidays in Goa and then criticize Goa and its administration. That is no, no. A million dollar question is, are we Goans ready, hungry, thirsty, to save and restore what is left in Goa, or are we continuing to stick to our susagat, four o'clock getting up, sleeping? Goa is maimed, bruised, and raped by the entrepreneurs. When will we get up and say enough is enough and work unitedly to save our state from this catastrophe? When will the Goan associations all work together? Rather than in vacuum, we have three associations in Melbourne. I am hoping to get some sense in us. The only political person that I know who had a soft corner for Goa was late Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. I hope his wife, Sonia, turns her eyes towards Goa in this hour of need. Today the mantra, teamwork and unity must be adopted for the attainment of success. When one works in a team, the pressure is distributed and attainment of success seems relatively easier. Success seems to come nearer and appears more realistic. Encouraging one another in a team gives additional strength to achieve goals. As the popular saying goes, you are one when you are one. You are ten if you are with another four. Unity has always been the strength not only in intellectual human thoughts 
Has this truth been applicable even in the animal world from the ages? One can seldom see an elephant or a deer roaming alone in jungle. Goans need to be like a lesson of the geese flying in the V formation. This increases the efficiency of the geese by 71%. Focus, efficiency, keep sight of the destination and we will attain and we will attain what we want. My Goan brothers and sisters, let us pledge our individual support for Goan unity right at this moment. Let us kick out our DNA issues. Knee-jerk reaction is in each Goan. Undermining assumptions, perceptions, and we need to take account of character, ethic, and personality ethic. In short, Goans need to have a paradigm change. If we Goans continue to undermine one another, someone else will continue to take what is left, even our Izzat. Less Goans will be called Gunis, and Goa may be a step closer to surely going in Guan. The owners lies with us for the sake of our children and grandchildren. United, we go on stand, defeated we fall. Let all go on overseas, put aside their differences, be in Melbourne, Middle East, Canada, elsewhere. Dio bore kurum, shukran, jazilan, mar salama, salam to my face.